Hey guys, I'm not an expert on epoxy casting, but I'm going to try to maybe answer some questions and help people get started. This is a mold for a CNC mill base, it's a vertical mill. It's a 47 by 7 thick by 25 wide. And to start with, for my casting, I take the cubic inch measurements of this, or you can do cubic centimeter, whatever scale you're working in. Uh, so you find the volume of it, basically. And then uh, I convert that volume for myself, I convert it into gallons. I take that volume measurement and then I measure it, uh, my largest media, in something of a known volume. This happens to be 20 ounces when filled to the top. I weigh that volume with my largest media and I've got 1,003 grams, so basically one kilogram. So now I have a starting point for my volume measurements. After I've determined how much of a, fi of, of a known volume uh, of an object in my largest media, I can tell you how many of those, uh, for example, how many of those plastic cups it would take to fill this. This particular casting is 182 kilograms in total uh, based on how many of those small containers of gravel it will take to fill this particular mold. Now I'm not filling this mold all the way to the top. You can see I've got a, a little divot here in the middle. Uh, that's where a ball screw rests. Got some tapers on the side. I've got some pipe that's going to displace some of the media. Also some just internal reinforcements and studs. Those are going to displace some media as well. So I know it's not going to take that volume to fill this thing up to, to, this, to the level that I'm going to fill it to. But it's better to know uh, what it would take to fill it entirely. That way you have too much and uh, you don't run out halfway through your cast. Probably the next biggest concern everybody has is how much of which media to put in there. Now I change my mixtures uh, with each uh, different casting I'm doing, depending on what type of casting I'm doing and how big it is, how many details there are. So I'm going to show you real quick how I determine that. I take a, a clear or semi-clear container such as this. This happened to have potato salad in it. Um, I just reuse these things. You could use a glass measuring cup, whatever it is. Anyway, so I'm going to measure out uh, one kilogram of gravel. So this is what one kilogram of gravel looks like. Uh, you can see that there's some voids in there uh, between the pebbles. What I want to do is add enough sand to that that those voids are all gone. That, that one right there in particular, that large one, you can see that. I don't want to fill that with epoxy. I want to fill that up with some kind of media, a smaller media. In my case, um, that's sand. Here I think is a, maybe a slightly better demonstration of it. Um, let me see if I can get it focused. You can see light in between the pieces of gravel. See light right there. That's what we want to avoid. We want to fill that up with sand. So we can see now that's a pretty solid surface. There's uh, some gravel just underneath the surface of the sand. But you can see a little piece of gravel there at the corner of that white uh, UPC sign. Anyway, that's what we want to do. We want to fill up the voids between the large pieces of aggregate. As a quick demonstration, I want to show you what happens if you overmix your aggregates. I'm going to dump just a little bit of sand in here. You can see the gravel is totally covered in sand. If we vibrate this too much, you can see how the gravel will come to the top and the sand will end up in the bottom. Now basically we have gravel and then on the other side over here, it's just sand. There's nothing but sand in there. Now if that's the effect that you want and you want all your larger aggregate to be on one side of your binder, that's fine, but just be mindful that this is what will happen if you over uh, mix it when it's dry. Now in this particular cast, I would get, uh, you know, this gravel is fairly small. Uh, some of it's uh, up to 10 millimeters. Uh, I've got a, a mixture in here. Some of it goes down to one millimeter and even smaller. Um, so it fills itself pretty good, but there's not really enough small uh, fragments in there and small pebbles in there to make it uh, mix really well. So I've also got some sand. This is just typical sand. I've dried it. Um, and then also I've got glass media, which is a very fine, just basically like a powder. And that will help fill any of the other voids that are left in there. Also, when you're working with this glass media, I recommend you wear a respirator. Because when you dump it uh, in, you can see a little dust there. You don't want to breathe that. It's really bad for you. So just using the visual inspection, I've determined, you know, about 1,000 kilograms of gravel. Or, I'm sorry, 1,000 grams of gravel. 750 grams of sand. 
and about 250 grams of media, uh, glass media, works out really well to fill all of my voids. So that's the mixture I'm going to go with. So that leaves me with, um, I believe it was 50% gravel, 37.5% um, sand, and 12.5% um, glass media. Add those together, you come back with 100%. So that's the ratios I'm using, and that's how I determine. Next, there's always a lot of questions about epoxy. This is just regular bar top casting epoxy. This is the curing agent or hardener, and this is the resin, sometimes called filler. This is also identical to boat epoxy, boat repair epoxy. Some of them are UV resistant. I don't care about that because this is not going to be out in the sun. It's going to be indoors inside my shop all the time. This has a 15,000 PSI compression strength and a 700 or 7,500 uh, PSI tensile strength. It does cure very hard, makes a nice uh, cast. There are different epoxies you can get. There's literally thousands of different resins you can use for this kind of thing but this is what i picked these are this is ninety dollars for a two gallon kit of resin and and hardener on ebay i've got <clears throat> uh several of these kits i think i've got five gallons left right now uh, once it's all mixed so i've got plenty to do this casting and that's basically how i get started now there's always the question of how much epoxy to use um as a general rule of thumb less epoxy is better it's less plastic which means it's less flexible and more rigid but uh, you get it too rigid and it won't stay together very well it will tend to crack so since i'm going to go i'm going to try to hold it six percent epoxy on this cast i'm putting some rebar reinforcement in it um, i don't know that i need it i'm doing it as a, i guess just extra insurance also on a dry cast like this table, this is a four and a half, five percent mix. It's not aesthetically pleasing, really. I mean, it's it's very rigid, it's very hard. Uh, I've smacked this with a hammer; you can't break it. And it's also encapsulated in a steel box, so I'm not worried about that breaking or going anywhere. But this is what a dry cast will look like. This is um, two millimeter, one to two millimeter quartz gravel with some glass media in it. Uh, the first cast I did had some gravel or granite uh, dust in it, but I've skipped all that and just quartz gravel is really easy for me to get a hold of, so that's what I do most of my casting with. You're also not gonna wanna mix all of your aggregates and epoxy together all at once. This is a 10 kilogram batch. So I have to put 182 uh, kilograms in that mold to fill it up. I've split that up into 10 kilogram batches. I'll need about 17 and a half batches to get it uh, filled up but you can't mix 182 kilograms all at once and you certainly can't pour it or place it in in the time frame that you're going to need you're going to have about an hour hour and a half of work time with the epoxy it's about 80 degrees right now in my shop so it would start curing in about 45 minutes it'd start to get kind of gooey and it wouldn't wouldn't want to wouldn't want to form very well so uh, i've taken uh 5,000 grams of gravel five kilograms uh, 3.75 kilograms of sand and 1.25 kilograms of glass media and I've dumped it in this bucket and I've given it just a quick mix by hand uh, all the way down to the bottom again you don't want to over mix it when it's dry or all your fine media will end up at the bottom and all your large media will end up at the top so once this is done I'll mix up uh, six percent since this is 10 kilograms um, and, and I've I actually went ahead and reweighed the entire bucket uh, with this scale, which only measures in pounds, but I just wanted to verify that I didn't mess up any of my accumulative measurements measuring it with the metric scale here. But anyway, now I know I've got the right amount of ingredients, or dry ingredients. I'll mix up 7% epoxy, which will be, uh, or I'm sorry, 6% epoxy, which will be 0.6 kilograms or 600 grams. I'll, I'll mix it together with the resin and the hardener, and that'll be 600 grams of mixed epoxy, pour it in there and stir it up with a paint mixer and then pour it in that mold and then I'll have to place it and tamp it down so that there's no voids left in it. Things to watch for as you pour are really basic things. If you if you put a lot of epoxy and media in here, you know, your whole your mixture, your polymer concrete is really what we're pouring here. Um, if you put a lot of it in here and start tamping it down, and you don't watch the sides, the sides gonna start bowing. This is all gonna sit inside a box, so I'm not worried about that, but 
things inside it. Like uh, if you put a, a rail across here, uh, mounts, anything like that. You can actually skew those and bend those. Now it's slightly, or, you know, I'm talking a few thousandths or maybe uh, 0.05 millimeters. That, since we're trying to build a really accurate machine, that little bit of hump or bow that you put in there when you cast, can be detrimental to the accuracy of your machine. So watch that when you're tamping something down. If you're tamping it down or vibrating it down next to something that has to stay straight and square, make sure that you're not moving it out of place or bowing it. If you got both ends of it fixed, it could bow in the middle. And believe me, even a large bar, such as this solid steel bar that's an inch and a half wide and an inch and a half thick, I actually put 10 thousandths of hump in one of these on my other casting by packing epoxy up underneath it and it was fixed on each end but I put some hump in the middle of it so be mindful of that aside from that it's actually pretty easy um, I you know really it hasn't been hard for me I'm not a professional polymer caster I don't make countertops or anything I just do this as a hobby but it's not been that hard for me these studs uh, this is, these are coupler nuts these will not spin in the epoxy once they're embedded I put washers on the bottoms of them just to help reinforce them so they have a little more pull-out strength. But do some research on polymer concrete, and you'll find out that it's some really durable material and is actually pretty easy to work with. So hopefully you guys pick some things up. If you got questions, I'll try to answer them. But it's really not that mysterious. So in case there's any questions about how to calculate your, your aggregate values, like I said before, you take the, the known volume of your, your casting, and then you take some container of known volume and then you weigh that and now you have a conversion basically of from your media your largest aggregate to this volume so for example I would need 91 kilograms of gravel uh, 68.25 kilograms of sand 22.75 kilograms of glass media the whole casting weighs 182 kilograms so all we all I did was I took that and I divided it in half which is 50 percent that gives me 91 and then I took the other two divided those um, that gives me 37.5 percent sand and 12.5 percent of my glass media if I add those up I come up with 100 percent if I add up to kilograms I come up with 182 and if I add up to pounds I come to 401.63 and then for the epoxy I broke them down by five six eight and ten percent uh, like I said I'm going to try to go for six percent but you know it's not every one of my dimensions is by weight the only two volume measurements there are is determining the volume of your entire cast and then using something of known volume to determine how much uh, of your media you're going to have to have that's just to get a weight everything from that point on is all calculated by weight so my hardener and resin is calculated by weight everything is calculated by weight and then to simplify it make the mixing easier i used uh, a batch weight of 10 kilograms and of course just broke those down again with the same percentages that I used up here came up with how much each media type I need and then how much epoxy I need it really wasn't that complicated so hopefully uh, this is enough info to get you guys started or at least make you not quite as intimidated about it it's really not been that hard for me to do it's and it's actually quite enjoyable once you get done you cast it and you just let it set for two or three days and you come back and you've got a nice part or a nice base or table, whatever it was you're casting.